The image of a prison evokes feelings of hopelessness and despair. Being confined to a small space with no chance of escape makes many would-be criminals shudder with anxiety. And that's not to include the horrible quality of life within its walls. Many convicts suffer brutal prison conditions. However, there were those who had to endure some of the cruelest conditions in history. They weren't just locked up, they were trapped at sea in what many call the floating hell. Meet Henry Mayhew and John Binney. They were two journalists and social reformers who wanted to investigate the criminal justice system of Britain in the mid-1800s. They had toured solitary cells in Pentonville, Millbank, and Brighton. However, what they found on prison ships was unlike any other prison system they'd ever encountered. These ships, often referred to as hulks, were decommissioned warships. Usually, they were towed away from the sea and disassembled, repaired, or just abandoned, but the British government found a way to make use of these dilapidated ships by converting them into floating prisons. One foggy morning in 1855, the two journalists saw for themselves the horrors of being on one of these wicked Noah's Arks. The long-abandoned ship was unlike anything they'd ever seen. Its wooden body was covered in portholes, and crude washing lines had replaced the flags that once hung between the masts. Mayhew and Binney found out that the ship had been abandoned on the River Thames for many years, and what was once a naval warship was now a horror house. There was an obvious difference between it and other ships that sailed past it. For one, it was in a deplorable state and two, its passengers were prisoners. The feeling of depression aboard the ship was palpable, and this was the sad reality for the unfortunate few on board. They continued their exploration of the ship and noticed that the wooden walls were falling apart and barely held together by rot, but what was going on below the deck was even more disturbing. A warden led Mayhew and Binney into the belly of the ship where the inmates were kept. Not only was the ship unsanitary, but it was also congested, so much so that the people down there barely had any personal space. The deck had the capacity for 240 people, each provided with shabby hammocks to sleep on. The journalists were stunned by what they saw, and before they could even take everything in, the morning bell went off and the deck suddenly came to life. The formerly sleeping inmates sprang into action and went about their morning activities. They began washing buckets, arranging their beds, and washing tables in preparation for breakfast. All the while, wardens patrolled with their rods, looking to punish anyone loitering around, avoiding work. Watching them go about their activities, Mayhew and Binney were shocked at how these inmates could adjust to life in a ship that was nothing more than a rotten, leaky tub. For many years, prison reformers protested against the use of abandoned ships as prisons. Although the inmates may have committed grave crimes to get them in such a position, the reformers believed that no one should be forced to live under such conditions, and the two journalists could see why. This begs the question, why was such a cruel prison system introduced in the first place? Prison hulks were first introduced in England in 1776, a year after the start of the American Revolutionary War. The war halted many operations within England, including the transportation of convicts to British colonies in North America. As the war continued, felons continued to increase in numbers, leading to overcrowding of prison facilities across England. To address this problem, Parliament passed an act permitting the use of abandoned ships on the River Thames as temporary prisons. Male convicts were sentenced to two years of imprisonment and hard labor on prison hulks, pending the time they could be transferred to a standard prison facility. While this was bad news for the unfortunate convicts, it was a golden opportunity for merchants to make quick cash from housing convicts on their ships. The contract for managing the first hulks in England was given to Duncan Campbell, who was a merchant and transporter of convicts. In no time, he was appointed the first superintendent of prison hulks in England, which was a huge promotion. Campbell revamped his ship, the Justitia, which was formerly used to transport convicts from the UK to Maryland and Virginia. The ship was made to accommodate hundreds of convicts for at least two years. He tore down the internal cabins and replaced them with bunks that barely measured up to 50 centimeters in width. 
The first inmates to board the ship were horrified, and rightfully so. In the first few months of being on the Justitia, most of the men on board fell terribly ill, resulting in more than a quarter of them dying. Their bodies were either claimed by relatives or buried in unmarked graves on shore. Some were even illegally sold to anatomists for dissection experiments. However, the Justitia was not the only hulk stationed along the River Thames. There were about 25 in total. Some of them operated successfully for a while, decades even, and before long, these unconventional prisons attracted the attention of prison reformers. John Howard, a philanthropist who visited the Justitia in 1776, was shocked by the conditions in which these men lived. He reported to Parliament that the inmates were sickly and underfed, and many had no clothes to wear. They were poorly treated by the wardens, some had no beds and were forced to share blankets, and drank poorly filtered water from the river. Howard also spoke about the urgent health concerns on the ship. The inmates often came down with water and foodborne diseases, which were communicable, and the poor spacing between prisoners did not help matters. The sick inmates were neither isolated nor properly treated, which put the healthy ones at risk. Howard also spoke about witnessing abuse, murder, suicide, and robbery aboard the ship. The prisoners were depressed and broken. They were treated like they were less than human, with no regard for their personal well-being, and this took a huge toll on their mental health. In his statement, Howard said, If I were to attempt a full description of the miseries and dirt in these ships, I could fill a volume. Over the years, many reformers protested against the use of prison hulks. However, the system grew in popularity and was adopted by other regions outside of England. Male convicts suffered the same fate in Cork, Dublin, Plymouth, and even Bermuda. Most of them were incarcerated for minor crimes like theft and other related offenses. By 1829, this system of incarceration reached its global peak, with an average of 5,550 prisoners on prison hulks in England and Bermuda alone, and each generation of inmates were slightly more confident than the last. The inmates would seek to cause trouble and inevitably get themselves into violent fights, so violent that fearful wardens refused to go to the lower decks and settle disputes. As the situation continued to get out of hand, one of the greatest concerns of prison reformers was the fact that the boys below the age of 10 were incarcerated in prison hulks alongside adult criminals. After decades of petitioning for segregation, Parliament finally agreed to keep the boys on a separate ship where they were taught trades like carpentry and shoemaking. On the other hand, the men were made to do very labor-intensive, dangerous jobs. They were used as cheap labor for all manner of projects on shore. For example, the construction of dockyards. The prisoners worked every day from morning till night on the shores, building wharves for ships and digging ditches. Working in a dockyard can be a very dangerous job, and because most of them were unskilled, some of the inmates were involved in serious accidents, which resulted in their deaths. There were accounts of convicts who died from being jammed between two timbers, or their skulls being crushed. Many also suffered from severed limbs caused by falling stones and timber. In the face of this horror, rates of violent riots and insurrections within prison hulks increased greatly. Convicts attacked wardens with weapons they had secretly acquired and seeked to escape by any means necessary. While many resorted to violence, some opted to disguise themselves as civilians to escape and would sew trousers from old bedsheets or worn-out clothes. A plot to escape wasn't always successful, but many convicts would rather die trying. In the following years, the situation became difficult for England to ignore, and after many years of petitioning, the British government finally abolished the use of prison hulks in 1857. Finally, convicts were free from an inhumane, public, and rotten system of incarceration. So what do you think? Would you survive the horrors of life aboard the floating hell? Let us know in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and tap the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all our future videos.